اعظم اللہ نشطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین ولاقبۃ الحل تقوا ولیقین وصلاۃ وسلام علیہ اشرف المبیاء والمرسلین خاتم النبی نب القاسم محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم و علیہ طیبین الطاہرین المعصومین لا سیما بقیت اللہ فی الردین روحی و رواح العالمین لتراب مقدم حیفدا و لعنت الدائمت علی اعدائه مجمعین من الان الى قیام یوم الدین اما بعد السلام علیکم جمیع و رحمت اللہ عید ال عید الاضحی مبارک تو ایوری ون از اے اسپیشل پروگرام ٹوڈے وی آر سیلیبریٹنگ عید الاضحی این عید لیجسلیٹڈ بائی دا ہولی پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینڈ آئم علیہ السلام آن ایوری عید یو سو سی دیٹ اٹ از آور رائٹ ٹو لیڈ دا پریئرس بٹ ادرز آر ڈوئنگ اٹ سو عید الفطر اینڈ عید الاضحیٰ بوتھ ہیو عید پریئر وے دا خطبہ دا سرمن از پرفارم بفور دا پریئر ان لائک دا فرائیڈے پریئرس ان فرائیڈے پریئرس دی خطبہ از فرسٹ اینڈ دین دا پریئرس اینڈ ان عید الفطر اینڈ عید الاضحیٰ دا پریئر از فرسٹ اینڈ دین دا سرمن بوتھ آف دیز سرمنس ہیو اے میسیج اینڈ دیر از اے سرمن مینشن فرام دا ہولی پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وچ از mainly for tazkiyah, for a person to be reminded that they are in this world for a short time and they have to prepare for the hereafter. And it is purification of oneself, one's soul. On every happy occasion in Islam, especially on the Eids, Ayad, Eid is from Aud. The word Aud is to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a day of returning to Allah. reminding ourselves that it is a day of celebration but to celebrate in uh, stopping ourselves from sinning so we should be celebrating to uh, to not sin and to obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we have many eids eid miladun nabi eid al fitr eid al adha eid al mabath uh, 27th of rajab 17th of rabi lawal which is eid miladun nabi we also have uh, eid nima shaban you know the month of Shaban, the uh, mid of Shaban, which is Eid Shabi Barat, you know, the Viladat of Imam Zaman alayhi salam, also 13th of Rajab and many other ayat. But the greatest Eid is Eid Ghadir, Eid Mubahla as well, but Eid Ghadir is the greatest Eid. Now on Eid Ghadir, Eid Mabath, Eid Milad al-Nabi, middle of Shaban, Dahb al-Ard, 25th of Rajab, which is an Eid. On all of those Eids, we have fasting, which is Musahab. Highly recommended to fast. But on Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha, we have prayers, we have Salat, we have Salat al-Eid. So you either have Eid Namaz, Eid Salat, uh, prayers, or you have fasting. So on every Eid, we either pray or we fast. Why? It is a reminder that we are returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word Eid has been used in the Holy Quran in Surah Ma'idah by Nabi Isa ala nabiyyina wa alihi wa alihi salam Allahumma rabbana anzil alayna ma'idatan min as-sama O Allah, uh, send down a, a dinner table for us or a, you know like a, a sufra or food send down food from the heavens to us yaj'allahu eidan li awalina wa li akhirina may it be an eid, a returning day it returns, it comes back every year سو لے اول نہ والے آخر نہ فار دی فرسٹ ونس اینڈ فار دا لاسٹ ونس او اللہ او اوور لوڈ سینڈ ڈاؤن فوڈ فرام دا ہیونس میک اٹ این عید سو عید ایکچولی کمس بیک ایوری ایئر دیٹس وائی اس کال آلسو عید سو اٹ از اے ڈے دیٹ ریٹرنس ایوری ایئر سو یو ریٹرن ٹو اللہ سبحانہ ون دا ڈے اینڈ اٹ از سم ٹائمس سم سے دیٹ اٹ از اے ڈے دیٹ ریٹرنس ٹو اس ایوری ایئر سو اٹ از فرام آو دا عید Now, we are reminded that it is an Eid for various reasons. Imam Ali al-Islam says, Kullu yawmin lam ya'as Allah fahuwa Eidun. Every day that when a human being does not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, does not commit sins, that is a day of Eid. So the day you don't sin is the day of Eid. 
So you celebrate the day that you don't sin. So on Eids, you should be not sinning so you can celebrate that day. Also, it is important to remember uh, that uh, celebration Eid is uh, in according to some other traditions. Uh, when a person came to him, Ali Islam and said, Ya Ali, uh, why are you eating dry bread today? He said, why? What's uh, today? He said, because today is Eid. You should be eating something very special, something nice, something sweet. He said, Indeed, it is Eid for the one whose sins have been forgiven. You are all celebrating and your sins have been, haven't been forgiven. So he is pointing out to the people that you should celebrate only when your sins have been forgiven. He is infallible, so he has no sins. And he says that, so every day is the same for me. But for the sinful people, they should be celebrating when they have the guarantee of their sins being forgiven. Now, two main Eids, which is shared between all Muslims, Eid al-Fitr, you give Fitra, Zakat al-Fitra is wajib, that's why it's called Eid al-Fitr. Zakat al-Fitra is basically, uh, at the completion of the month of Ramadan, you celebrate Eid, which is called Eid al-Fitr, on the first of Shawwal, you give Zakat al-Fitra. So Fitra is basically on any of the crops that you normally eat, either wheat if you normally eat, uh, bread, then you give three kilograms of the price of three kilograms of wheat if you mainly eat rice then you give price of uh, rice if you mainly eat uh, dates or whatever you normally eat of barley then you give whatever you normally eat you give three kilograms of the price of that commodity to the poor people so you they can say so that's called Izaka Eid al-Fitr. Eid al-Adha is Eid al-Adha basically uh, we give uh, um, normally an animal in sacrifice. So on Eid al-Fitr it is mainly crops that we give the price of. And on Eid al-Adha we normally give an animal. Like uh, you can give a camel or a cow or a sheep or a goat. And it is the remembrance of the sacrifice of Nabi Ibrahim salam, and his son Ismail. So Nabi Ibrahim and Ismail, Hazrat Ibrahim, Hazrat Ismail saw a dream. You all know famous incident from Surah Safar, Surah number 37. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ibrahim saw a dream three times. And in his dream he saw, he said to his son, Inni ara fil manami anni azbahuk. Fanzur mata tara. Ya bunayya inni ara fil manami. Oh my son, my beloved son, I saw in my dream that I am slaughtering you. What is your view? So the son said, If alma tu'mar, satajaduni insha'Allah min sabirin. O father, do what Allah has ordained you to do. Perform what Allah has told you to do. It is the dreams of prophets are not like ours. Our dreams usually don't mean anything. Sometimes they have a meaning, but it is not an order or a command or a revelation to us. It is merely a dream. It means nothing. Even if it has a meaning for you, it means nothing for the others. Even if I see in my dream that I'm slaughtering my son or my child, I'm not supposed to do that. It is not vahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not a revelation. But the messengers of Allah are different to us. So Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam was a messenger. So he told his son, he knew that he was ordered by Allah. And the son was also a messenger. So he also said, yes, father, you've been ordered. Carry out your responsibility. So the father said, okay, on such and such date we will. So that was the 10th of Zil Hijjah. It was the 10th of the 12th month uh, when the sacrifice was made. And Nabi Ibrahim salam took his son to Mina, uh, the plains of Mina, just outside Mecca. Right next to Mecca are the plains of Mina. So the first, the closest, there are three plains. The closest to Mecca are Mina, then Mash'ar, and then Arafat. So they went to Mina, the mountains of Mina, between the mountains of Mina, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, um, wanted to slaughter his son. And as he was taking his son from home, uh, the mother of uh, Ismail alayhi salam, uh, Hajar, uh, or ha Hagar in English, Hajar in Arabic, or Hajra, um, 
in most of the other languages, Asian languages. She watched her, uh, her husband and her son um, preparing for something and she was uh, thinking what is going on and she saw that he's taking a knife and some rope and um, different things with him. Uh, so she started uh, preparing and she was quite worried and uh, anxious what is going on. And the mood of father and son has changed because it was such a big trial. And as they were leaving, Satan, Shaitan, came to the door, changed into a human form, uh, to the door of Hajra, and he said to Hajra, Don't allow your husband to kill your son. Stop him. Uh, get out of the house and quickly stop him. Go behind him. And she picked up some pebbles. And she threw the pebbles at the Satan and said, Oh, Shaitan, go away. So he asked, How did you know that I'm a Satan? So she said, uh, Anyone who uh, instigates the wife of a messenger or a prophet to leave her house uh, for wrong reasons, then he must be a Satan. So uh, that is where we have the three uh, satans that we stone, you know, the three pillars in Mina. Uh, seven stones we hit, each one of the uh, satans, the small, the middle and the big satan. So the small one is for when Hajra, uh, Hajar hit the satan. Now satan, shaitan, chased Ismail who was walking behind his father at a distance and said, Oh Ismail, don't listen to your father. He is uh, elderly and he uh, probably cannot think straight. So Ismail salam, picked up some pebbles and threw at uh, the shaitan and said, No, go away, O shaitan. He said, How did you know? He said, The one who doubts the, the intentions of a prophet, the one who doubts the aql and the wisdom of a prophet and thinks that he is probably saying some hezian or something which is absurd or um, nonsense, that person must be shaitan. So shaitan then changed his form and went to Ibrahim al-Islam and said, oh, oh Ibrahim, don't take your dream serious. It is only a dream. So Ibrahim al-Islam picked up some pebbles and hit shaitan and said, oh shaitan, leave me. He said, how did you know that I'm shaitan? He said, because the one who doubts the wahi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is none but shaitan. So it was a sacrifice of Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam that we celebrate on Eid al-Adha, 10th of the Hijjah. So Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam went to um, Mina and the son said, Ismail alayhi salam, Ishmael, he said, O oh father, cover your eyes. Uh, because you will not be able to bear the pain of killing your own son. So Hazrat Ibrahim al-Islam tied his eyes and held the knife and tied the hands of his and legs of his son and then he put, put the knife on the, on, the, um, uh, on the throat and he wanted to slaughter. So he made a mark uh, just as he wanted to slaughter him because um, he put the knife there and uh, when he moved the knife he finished slaughtering his son and he opened uh, the knot that he had on his eyes, you know, the cloth that he was tying his eyes with. He removed it and he saw that his son is sitting on the side and there is a ram, there is a sheep that he has slaughtered. So he was surprised. He said, Ya Allah, you know, to, in his heart he was saying, Ya Allah, have you, what has happened? I wanted to slaughter my son based on your order. What happened? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, Qad saddaqta roya, qad saddaqta roya, ya Ibrahim. Oh Ibrahim, you have fulfilled your dream. You lived, you accepted the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have now lived the dream. Um, we have chosen you and we accept your sacrifice. At the end, and we have replaced this with a greater sacrifice. Allama uh, Dr. Iqbal, the Pakistani, poet 
Dr. Muhammad Iqbal, he says, Sir, Dr. Muhammad Iqbal, in Farsi, a couplet, he says, Allah, Allah, ba'i bismillah, pedar, ma'naye zibhe azim Ahmad pesar. He says, uh, what a great father and what a great son, meaning Ali and Hussein, alayhi salam. Ali is the ba of bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and an naqbudu lathi taht al-ba, he's implying, I, I, you know, when Imam Ali Islam said everything in this world is in the Quran and the Quran is summarized in Fatih and Fatih is summarized in Bismillah and the Bismillah is in Ba and Anna Nukhtadilati Taht al Ba. I am the dot beneath the Ba. And so Allah Maqbal says that what a great father and what a great son. The father is the dot beneath the Ba and son is the meaning and extension and explanation of the Bhadim, the great sacrifice. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that. Uh, a greater sacrifice will be made uh, in place of this sacrifice. And that was Imam Hussain al -Islam in, in Karbala. So there are many similarities between the two incidents. So Hajj is the revival of, um, of faith and likewise is Karbala. One is on the 10th of the last month, Dhul Hajj, Eid al Adha, and the 10th of Muharram is the revival of religion again in the second form, which is the 10th of the first Islamic calendar month, when Imam Hussain al-Islam made the sacrifice. And Nabi Ismail al-Islam was saved, and that's why we celebrate. But Imam Hussain al-Islam was sacrificed, that's why we commemorate. Celebration is when, the, uh, when someone is saved, and commemoration or sorrow is when someone is sacrificed. So same, similar things you see in Makkah and in Karbala. So you see Safa and Marwa. In the Safa wal Marwa min Sha'ir Allah, you see the two signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sha'ir Allah, Safa and Marwa, two mounds. Exactly the same distance between Safa and Marwa that you see in uh, Karbala, in between the two harams of Imam Hussein and Hazrat Abbas, alayhi salam. Exactly the same distance. You go around Kaaba seven times and then you do the tawaf of the haram of Imam Hussein, salam. his sister walked around, uh, and circumambulated his body seven times. Uh, you see sacrifice in, in Hajj, but you see greater sacrifice. Imam Hussain Islam giving his own life and the lives of his children, sons, his nephews and his brothers and his companions. Everyone sacrificed in Karbala. So it is a revival of the Islamic uh, teachings of uh, uh, Hajj you see in Karbala. Um, and therefore, um, the entire message is revived in Karbala. Lastly, in Hajj, you see uh, some important aspects. So you see the sacrifices, you see the, you see the st three um, stoppings, you know, in Arafat, in Mashar, and in Mina, you stop the three nights. Likewise, you stop, um, in, you know, when you go to Karbala, in three different occasions. For example, in, uh, there are three makhsusis for Imam Hussain al-Islam, um, you know, Arafah, you can come to Karbala, the Nima Shaban, the mid of mid Shaban, and your Arba'in, uh, the 20th of Safar. Um, so these are the important dates for, for Karbala. And uh, on Ashura, and, and for all of those important dates, it is, um, you know, the reward is uh, very high, like 500 Hajj. Um, 500 Umrahs and 500 Jihad with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or a thousand Hajj, you know, for example, on Arba'een. On Arafah it is 500 Hajj. So it is extremely important that we understand why we are celebrating Eid al-Adha. It is a revival of religion through the teachings of Nabi Ibrahim Alaihi Wasallam. And Nabi Isa Alaihi Wasallam also said, oh Allah sent the dinner table, that's for Eid al-Fitr. And Eid al-Adha is the revival of the teachings uh, and the message of and Nabi Ibrahim salam. So we are celebrating Eid al-Adha for the uh, thoughts of Nabi Ibrahim salam. His wife, when you go to Sa'i between Safa and Marwa, it is basically the revival of Hajj and the uh, Rukun of Hajj, Sa'i between Safa and Marwa, the two mounts walking. That was uh, Hajra, the mother of Ismail, who walked between uh, those mounts seven times um, for and the love of her son who was dying of thirst. Nabi Ibrahim left his son there and he was saying, 
uh, you know, when Hadith, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam that leave your son and wife here um, in Makkah. So he said, Bewadin ghayri di dhar'in. Oh Allah, in a, a valley that has no plantation, has no water, it is your order, so I submit and I'm leaving, but my heart is sinking when I'm leaving them behind and that they have no plantation here, no shade, no water. So Allah wanted to show some miracles and as Ismail salam, was moving his feet onto the ground on a, um, on a rock, uh, a fountain started uh, of water which is called Zamzam. And uh, uh, it was basically when she was seeing a mirage, uh, a sarab in Arabic mirage. You know, when you see from far away in, in uh, a desert, you know, the, it, you know, the heat is so much that it seems like water from far away. You start seeing water and she was seeing on the two mounts water and she was running between the mounts and suddenly the water started gushing out of the earth uh, from the feet of Ismail and he quenched his thirst uh, from there. But it was, it is, so Sa'i is a revival and all the parts of Hajj are revival of the teachings of Nabi Ibrahim a.s. And likewise, you see a mother like Zainab Kubra salam alayha, or the other mothers like Layla or uh, Rabab salam, salam alayha. You know, so there are so many mothers who sacrifice everything in the plains of Karbala. So you see other mothers like Hajra in Karbala. And you see sons who are uh, sacrificing. But with all of those teachings, they have revived uh, Islam. So we celebrate Eid al-Adha. And uh, when you slaughter a sheep or whatever, people can share. Yeah, it is sacrifice, qurbani, uh, or uh, you know, giving a, an animal is not wajib. It is only wajib for the people on hajj. But for the rest of the people, it is highly recommended that they give an animal. And then it has three parts. You keep one part of the meat at home, give one part to the neighbors and relatives, and one part to the poor people. Um, so you can share. Uh, you know, people who can't afford it, they can share together, um, giving sacrifices, um, you know, in camel, in um, cow, you can have portions, you can, uh, you can um, have portions, different people can, uh, seven people or more, depending on the kind of animal, and uh, it is only recommended that you give one animal from uh, one family or one person in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is meant to feed the poor people. It is not meant um, just for sacrifice. It is, yes, meant that you invite other relatives and friends and neighbors to your household to, uh, to eat with you, but it is generally meant for the poor people that you eat meat all the time, but the poor people can't afford meat, so you feed them with meat. And they have priority in the meat portion. And just like on Eid al-Fitr that you give them crops or you give them money, so they can celebrate Eid al-Fitr with you, they can buy new clothes and food, and all the Eid al-Adha so they can eat meat and you can give them food to eat. Uh, and that's the whole concept. On Eid it is a day of celebration for everyone, not just for rich people, but for everyone. And you are supposed to remember the poor people with you. Thank you very much for listening and Eid Mubarak to everyone. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah.